Welcome everybody to part four of our Google Cloud tutorial series. Uh, in this video, what we're going to be doing is covering a new API, and that is going to be the Natural Language API. So uh, what we need to do first is since it's a new API, we need to enable that API to use it. So we can type language, Google Cloud Natural Language API. And mine's actually already enabled, so uh, I don't need to do anything, but if yours is not enabled, go ahead and hit enable and you're ready to go. Once you've done that, <clears throat> that's all we need to do in that console. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and change directory back one and I'm going to go ahead and make dir natlang example, cd natlang example, and then now I'm going to nano, um, I guess natlang example, dot pi. Okay, so uh, the first thing I want to go ahead and do is we're going to, from google.cloud, we're going to import language. And then just like before, if you want, you could say, you know, client equals language dot uh, client like that. That's very similar to the Vision API. Now let's go ahead and make a function out of this. So we're going to define a language analysis. And language analysis will just take some degree of text. It's really hoping to get away with this. There we go. One, two, three, four. And um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to say basically our text document. So we're going to say document equals client dot document underscore from underscore text. I want to make sure it doesn't run over my face. And uh, this takes one parameter, and that is the text. Now we're going to say sent underscore analysis for sentiment analysis is going to be equal, whoops, let me fix this, equal to document dot analyze underscore sentiment. And then um, just to show you what your options are, I'm just going to do, um, well, I guess in this case we'll actually have to print it. So let's do print dir sent analysis. And then what we're going to say is sentiment equals sent analysis dot sentiment. So I'm just going to save us time. That's a, one of the methods. Now, uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to say ent for entity analysis equals um, document under uh, document dot anal, analyze uh, entities. And then finally, ent sentiment. <laughs> Uh, entities, entities equals ent analysis dot entities, and then we'll just return sentiment and entities. So basically, the language API. We can even like we can look more into it too. So like, let's see if I can find uh, documentation. View the documentation. Let's see if we can find maybe concepts will have what I'm looking for. Yeah, so this kind of tells you what all your options are. So you've got sentiment analysis, entity analysis, and syntactic analysis. So analyze syntax would be your other option. Um, I'm not going to do the syntactic analysis. They used they had some pictures before, but I'm not seeing the beautiful pictures. Let's go to product overview. See if this has the pretty pictures. I'm not seeing the pretty pictures. Um, maybe have two guys. I don't know. Anyway, uh, the things that are uh, available to us are sentiment analysis, entity analysis, and that syntactic analysis. And basically, uh, the two that we're going to use here are sentiment analysis and entity analysis. And sentiment analysis will give us two things. It gives us sentiment and then salience, was it? Or magnitude? I can't remember what it is. It's, uh, I think it's magnitude. And then entities will have salience. So sentiment will have the sentiment score, which is negative one to positive one, and then magnitude, which is unbounded and just zero to infinity. So it's just how important is the sentiment, you know, to overall. And then with entities, you've got again the same thing. It's kind of like what's the entity, and then the salience is like what is that entity's importance, basically. Uh, and that's that. So let's just look at a few examples. So um, cool. So that's our language analysis. So now what we're going to say is let's come up with some example text. So example underscore uh, text equals um, 
Is it not obvious that Python is the best programming language of them all? Okay, that's our example text. And then what we're gonna say is let's go ahead and say sentiment entities equals uh, language analysis example text. And then let's go ahead and print. Um, we can do sentiment.score for the actual sentiment itself. And then we can do uh, sentiment.magnitude. And then, um, so that's just, so sentiment is gonna be on the entire document, right? So whatever text you pass through, it's just gonna return the sentiment. So if you wanted it to get sentiment per sentence or something like that, you, you would have to split the sentences yourself. Now, what we're gonna do is the entities, that's gonna be something to iterate over. You're gonna have multiple entities. So for E in entities, um, we're going to print, this has, you've got, you got quite a few things, but we're gonna do name E dot entity type. So the name is just, what is the entity? So basically from the text, basically this is gonna be the text name. Entity type is gonna be like, what's the classification of this entity? Metadata, which is pretty cool, e dot, um, metadata. This will be, again, um, if there is information on this entity, it'll return metadata to you. And then e dot salience, um, basically the importance. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. Yes, let's do netlang, net, I'm always forgetting Python. Netlang example.py. Okay, so in the first one, um, basically, here's our sentiment. It's uh, slightly positive, and the magnitude is also just kind of eh. Uh, and, um, and I'm not really sure I'd agree with, with that return, but okay. Um, next, we have um, basically the entities. So it's got Python, um, other, which is the type. This is your metadata. So this gives you the, uh, meta, which is actually pretty cool because it actually detects that this is the Python programming language because I think we actually use programming language in the actual text, but it, so it realized, oh, this is not Python the, the snake. This is actually Python the programming language, which is pretty nifty. And it gives you the Wikipedia page. Um, and then it tells you the salience, the importance. Well, obviously it's very important here. Um, and then here you've got programming language, which again is just other, um, no metadata on this one, and then the salience is just really not important. We're clearly talking about Python here. Um, so yeah, that's pretty pretty darn cool. So now let's let's work with like maybe a little bit more text. So I'm gonna come over here and um, let's go ahead and just search for Python. And let's go to that Wikipedia page. And let's just take like <laughs> these three paragraphs here. And let's just copy, come back to the terminal, um, edit this and now the example text um, I'm just gonna delete it all I'm gonna say example text equals triple quote uh, right click triple quote beautiful save that let's run that again and then um, now what you can see is from all that text and in fact let me just make some space so I know I'm not running into the other one there we go so right out of the gate, we've got sentiment, which is more positive than my sentiment, saying that Python is the best language, but all right. Then you've got Python. It recognizes this is an organization first. You've got Guido Van Rossum being noticed, noted as a person who also has his own Wikipedia URL. Pretty cool. Um, you've got CPython, which also has its own Wikipedia, so on. It recognizes Java, C++, all these other things. Um, anyway... A lot of information here, Python Software Foundation too, got that as an organization. Um, and then you get all the, like the importance. So like, for example, this one should be pretty darn important, right? It's It's got probably the most importance over all of these others. Um, and if I was to just take a quick guess here, it looks like these are sorted for you in the order of um, that salience. So yeah, the most important thi thing that it thinks is at the top, and then as you get down to the bottom, you get to the lesser important things, which is really kind of interesting that Python Software Foundation's at the bottom. Um, of course, and styles just don't matter. <laughs> um, interesting. Okay, so uh, that's the natural language uh, API example. Um, I'm really, there's not too much for me more to talk about here, but 
this is actually really impressive. So if you're not impressed by the, the Vision API and the Natural Language API up to this point, um, I don't know what to tell you, but this is actually pretty cool stuff. There's so much that's going into this that's detecting the entities. And if you've ever worked with like NLTK, for example, with named entity recognition, it's really difficult. Like it'll screw up like with Python software foundation. It'll like detect Python software or foundation or just Python as also the organization. And it'll like, you're not going to get metadata. That's for sure. <laughs> um, uh, it's just not going to be this good and it's not going to detect salience. You're going to have to figure that one out on your own. Um, and then the other thing with like sentiment, sentiment's really challenging. And then same thing with also magnitude. Like these are really challenging things. And for this to just boom, it's just, if you're not impressed, it's probably because it's so simple. Like the API just makes it so freaking simple. Uh, and the other thing too is like, for example, uh, let me just type a language. Let's go to the language API. No. Oh, here we, we are already there. <laughs> I just want to go to the prices. Let's see if I can find prices. Here we go. So if you're only, I, don't, I guess units, I'm not sure what units is. Is that like text that you sent through? Because I would think text that you sent through for sentiment, sure, I guess that's maybe fair, but for entity recognition, it should depend on what the size is. But anyway, um, feature. And then I don't know if this is like per unit, a dollar per unit. I don't really know. I honestly don't know. Like if this is, uh, I'm assuming this price is how much you would pay for like the first million units, you would just pay another dollar. I'm not positive on that. I'm not really sure I want to test it. But if that's the truth, like if you're only paying a dollar, <laughs> units for what? Is this, let's see, limit for 20? I'm trying to see if you pay per unit. Because if you paid per unit and a unit was, let's say, just each thing you submitted, that would be an asinine cost. But I think it's actually... Yeah, I don't know, because this gets cheaper, so that doesn't make any sense. So it has to be per unit, but the first 5,000 units are totally free. And then is this per unit? I don't know. Someone comment below if you know. Oh, price per 1,000 units. <laughs> okay, so anyway, a <laughs> dollar per 1,000 units. Um, wow, that could get expensive quick if you're doing a million units, but... Even even for something like like Centex.com, which is sentiment analysis, and currently I do that all on my own. Um, you know, that's, um, I don't, I'm trying to think of how many updates a day that probably runs through. I'm trying to see all, let's do seven days, 100,000. So probably like a million updates or something, something close to that for like an entire article. Uh, so you'd be probably in this range and then a thousand, I don't know. It's probably pretty expensive, but at the same time, um, I don't know. Cause you also have to think about how much, you know, you, cause you either have to process this on your own or on your server. And in fact, let me just pause this real quick. I don't want to do some math real, real fast. Okay. Yeah. So I'm back now. So like, for example, if you wanted to run like the full Twitter fire hose or something and get sentiment on each of those. Uh, it looks like that would cost you probably like about $2,000 a month, just <clears throat> running some quick numbers there. So um, that's pretty high actually for that one, but I'm going to find, let me get one of the other ones since I was, I'm, I think like, let's how about the vision one. I think the vision one I was pretty impressed with as far as cost was concerned. Um, at least you can get up to 5k units for free. <laughs> that's pretty cheap. Uh, let's go to view documentation. Where was the pricing? I forget how I even got to pricing on the other one. Pricing. I just hadn't loaded yet. Yeah, so like this one is interesting. Prices per thousand units. So like for label detection and OCR stuff and all that, like for on image data, like these prices are really good. That's I'm kind of surprised that it would take an image data, like image data and natural language data are priced so similarly. Like the process, at least from what I've done, maybe I'm doing it wrong, but to process an image and to train image classifiers is totally different than doing like a text, 
text analysis. Like text analysis is not anywhere near what image analysis costs. But anyway, so the image stuff is, is really good. But yeah, for the for the text analysis, I guess I just I had looked at prices already for the vision API, but I hadn't seen it for the text analysis. So the text analysis is pretty darn impressive. But if you're trying to do big volume and you're going to pay, uh, that might I, they should work on their pricing. If you ask me, I know they're asking me. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's it on natural language. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, feel free to leave them them below. Otherwise, uh, we're going to be moving on to yet another uh, API. Probably the, one of the last ones I'll probably release in this uh, this one, but that's going to be the translation API, which is another one that's like super quick, super easy, super powerful. I'm not positive on the pricing. I'll look at the pricing, but I, I think it's... I wonder if that one, since I since I'm already here, let's let's look up the. You can feel free to close out the window if you don't if you don't care about this. I'm not going to say anything more important at this point. Oops, I hit the wrong button. API docs. If you want to hear my opinion on Google's pricing models, yeah, it's kind of weird. Twenty dollars per. See, like this is on a per character basis. Why is the translation API on a per character basis, but the sentiment API is not? Like. What? It should be on a character basis. Especially because so many people are trying to do sentiment analysis on like tweets and stuff like that. So, but I mean, I guess if you were doing like document sentiment, so I guess the sentiment analysis uh, or like the natural language API makes a lot of sense if you're doing it on large documents, like entire articles or even more so like on, um, yeah, like journalist types of things, like very long things, like New York Times posts. <laughs> Or <laughs> they just go for days and days, or like medium articles. Uh, yeah, so, and then this one's on a per character. I think their, their natural language API should be on a per character basis. Anyway, um, $20 per million characters, which, um, that seems pretty fair, you know, for a translation API. I, I think that's okay. They don't have a free tier, though. That's kind of a bummer. Price per character sent to the API includes white includes white space characters. Empty queries charged for a character. Charges per character on a per character basis, even if the character is multiple bytes. Huh. Pro rata, proportional, and incremental. Cool. Anyway. Um, yeah, so that makes sense. I, I'm not quite sure. Like I said, Google, if you're listening, why is the natural language API not on a per character basis? Okay, anyway, uh, that's it. Like I said, nothing important. <laughs> See you in the next video.